Something very strange has happened. So you know in the previous Hermitcraft episode, I built up the Volcarbo because nobody was buying my potatoes? Do I fire the Volcarbo to display it? I mean, I feel like I should... What is... The Volcarbo has got a resident! <laughs> He can stay! All I need to do is make it look like this was intentional and not a complete and utter accident. Here we go. And... Does that do the trick? I feel like I could do better. Yes! <laughs> there it is! We have got... What, could, what was his name? The Zombies Potatoes? World War P? The Walking Fed? Up with all of these potato-based puns. It couldn't possibly be that one because nobody is fed up with all of these potato-based puns. I'll think on it. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. In the previous Hermitcraft episode, I built up the Volcarbo because I was struggling to sell the potatoes in my stores. <laughs> and it is still... <laughs> why is this so funny to me? I don't know why this is so funny to me. It is just the most pointless shop in the world, but it's fantastic. And it's also been decently successful. We've made eight diamonds, although... I'm sure most of them are me. Anyway, I was checking up on the profits of Harmless Harvest, as I always do, and it is doing incredibly well. And for some reason, I decided to right-click on this chest right here. And look. There is an object in this chest that... <laughs> this chest has never been graced with this object before. Somebody actually bought some potatoes from Harmless Harvests. <laughs> My goodness. To whoever it was. Please come forward, because I, I would like to pat you on the back. We could do like a potato high five. We just smash our spuds together or something. If you're not happy with spuds smashing, then that's fine by me. I would just like to pay my respects in some way. It makes it sound like they've died. Look, okay, this base right here, this base is looking cool, but it needs to be finished. It needs to be done. First things first, I need to do all of the greenery around the back. And you know what that means? It's time for a time lapse. And you know what that means? It means I'm going to bore you to death about cycling. You see, I am nine days into my 1,000 kilometers in October challenge right now. My buttocks are still alarmingly feeling fine, which is not what I was expecting. I'm currently 285 kilometers into the challenge. I have a 60 kilometer ride planned for tomorrow, which means I am bang on track to be able to complete the 1,000 kilometers in the month of October. I'm a little bit behind where I wanted to be at this stage, but unfortunately a filming project came up that meant that I wasn't able to do the amount of cycling that I was planning on doing. But it is going well. It's going really well. I'm still loving it, and I'm still feeling fresh. It's really quite surprising. Now, on the charity front, phew, thank you. Uh, thank you ever so much for your generosity. We are 75% of the way to reaching the goal that I set after completely blasting past my initial goal. So thank you. Um, and if you want to read more about the Cycling Projects charity, which is the one that I've chosen to support with this challenge, then there'll be links down in the description and there's a bunch of information on the Just Giving page if you do want to read up about it. But yeah, I just want to say I appreciate you so much. Thank you. And let's get back on with the episode. And this is where things begin to get scary. You see this? This, weirdly enough, I was actually looking forward to. I was excited to do all of the leafage. I was excited to do it. And I know that is really, really strange for me. But I enjoy it. I, I actually enjoy the process of adding all of the greenery to terraforming now. I know, I never thought I'd be saying those words. But I think part of the reason why I enjoyed this is because this is not the part of the project that I'm scared of in this episode. The part that I'm scared of is obviously... All of these buildings here. I mean, uh, oh, I'm just, I'm just terrified. I'm terrified. All right, let's do this logically. Now, I was reading through a lot of the responses to the video, and the majority of the people really liked my idea behind this one here. As I've said about a million times now, my mountain is actually inspired by a waterfall in the Philippines called Mantayupan Falls. And I thought it would be fitting to actually build up all of the houses and structures on this mountain in that sort of rural Philippines style. Now obviously that is very different from what I usually do, but I do think, I think I could be able to pull it off. So I guess the next logical step is to spend an hour or two in this world just working out some designs, which I will now do off camera. And I just want you to remember that I am not a builder. I work in ones and zeros, binary bits and bobs, redstone things. I, I'm not one for subjective bits in Minecraft. But I have shown it to my girlfriend who is half Filipino and she made a bunch of squeaky noises and seemed to really like it. So I think that's good. But then again, Vicky does support me in literally everything that I do and always thinks that everything I do is great. So 
She's biased. This is it. This is it. This is my little rural Philippines mountain town inspired by the things that I've seen. I mean, I'm... You know what? I am really, really happy with it. I, I actually think... I do think it's quite good. Like, this is so outside of my comfort zone, it's not even... It's not even within touching distance, okay? So, I did struggle a lot, but... I'm quite happy with the end result here. So this gives you a pretty good idea of how I intend to lay out all of the buildings on the mountainside. So I imagine there'll be one big one that is almost like the hub that I then build off of. And then I'll try my best to keep this idea of the smaller ones going at the front and then building up through the mountain out the back. And this build here, this, this was designed to be one of the ones that is actually up against the rock face, so there'll be a handful of these going up the sheer cliff face. So yeah, I'm gonna be totally honest, I am actually quite proud of myself here. I really do feel like I achieved the objective, and I genuinely really look forward to building these on the Hermitcraft server. But first, resource gathering. Oh boy, do we have a lot of resource gathering to do. Like, like an awful lot of resource gathering and so many different types of resources. And pretty much every single one of the resources is a type of resource that I don't actually have. Why do I have so much terracotta? <laughs> That's actually amazing. I clicked on that chest to show that I didn't have, but that was the one thing that I was concerned about because we would need loads of it. Why do I have so much? What is it doing here? Who has reverse robbed my base and, and just installed a bunch of terracotta? Seriously, when did I gather this? Well. That's a pleasant surprise. If my light continues, I'm gonna open this chest and there'll be a bunch of warped, warped blocks. There's, there's one. Well, that's better than none. Right, let's get to work. What on earth has happened to Zedaf's face? All right, now let's get to work. resources have been gathered and I'm hoping that this should be more than enough to build up all of the structures on the front of this thing. My goal for today is to get to all of these builds completed, all the ones going up the front of the structure simply because I'm not entirely sure what I want to do up here just yet. I'm not sure if I want it to be all houses or if I want to build something else on top of this mountain. This is going to cause me great physical pain but it needs to be done. That was one type of wood that I forgot to gather on my resource gathering mission. And now, I need to buy it. So there's 15 stacks, which is 30 diamonds. Also, Impulse, on the topic of stores, I actually wanted to buy something from Like and Subscribe. I know that you've struggled with customers in the past, but there's no stock. I was really excited to purchase some, but there's none. But on the topic of shops, there is a grand opening happening, and I kind of want to be there because it seems like it's going to be quite dramatic. Let's head to the Octagon. My fellow hermits of Season 8, welcome to the grand opening of the Octagon. Hello! Woo! Woo! Team Yo-Yo! Yeah, Hi everybody! Free Wait, why are we wooing? Strap yourselves in, get ready for the show. The Mad Doctor M77 is going to turn on the generator. This giant machine, it requires much power, my friends. And Doc is gonna... Oh, he's done something over there. He's gonna make it work for us. <laughs> All so, right. yes. He's I'm tinkering. charging up the generator. Doctor, turn on the generator, please! And crystal right. power. Is something happening? Anytime today would be good. Yeah, yeah, I'm loading it. Yeah, people have things to do. <laughs> Zombies coming Doc. up, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it seems oh. to be there's it's something going on. It's definitely inside. doing something. It's, fl it's yeah. flickering, I mean. <laughs> uh, Doc, I think we need more power. I, I, I I'm pretty sure we need more power. I think Dude. we have a problem. Wait, let me tune it a little bit. Uh-oh. Oh jeez! Oh jeez! Oh, I've been preparing. We've been preparing this the whole week, Doc. You could have at least focused on your task, my that. dude. Oh my uh -oh. goodness! Oh no! <laughs> oh, this is. Oh, oh boy, it's oh. even raining. This is. Whoa! 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 Welcome, Hermits, to the Octagon. Oh, my goodness <laughs> gracious me! <laughs> You can get great oh, savings wow. every day of the week. This, this is the most chaotic. Down here. I don't want to go near that thing. <laughs> oh, there see. Oh my oh, God! It's blowing up! Whoa! Whoa! Oh, there oh, we go. Yeah. What's oh, happening? Wow. It's supposed Beautiful. to happen. Hey! Oh, here it's we go! Oh, 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 Mumbo, why are all the oh, antennas like pouring up? What do you mean, Ryan? Ryan I did, I, did you not see the Volcarbo? It's basically the same. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically the same thing, yeah. <laughs> the antenna is powering up. 
He powered up. Yeah, guys, you've got free coupons. Please do go and spend liberally uh, in the octagon. Enjoy. So you, you you've got you've got a good idea for a grand boatum opening, right? What was this one? Well, do, do you not do you not remember me mentioning the the volcarbo? Do you not? <laughs> <laughs> a potato volcano does not quite compare to that one. Yeah. Yeah, when you say it like that, I, I, fair enough. Well, that was pretty bonkers. And now that I've done everything in my power to put off building the structures on this thing right here, I think it's time that we actually got started. Okay. Here goes. First block. First block has been placed. And now, now it's easy. Because, you know, I've started now. So I might as well keep going. Although I actually placed the first block in the complete wrong place. So this is maybe not the best start ever. Things are coming together quite nicely. This this is going well. I'm so glad that I planned this out beforehand in a creative mode testing world. I am also a little bit frustrated at myself because I went out and gathered all the resources to make a bunch of red concrete. Forgetting that the entire mountain is covered in red concrete. That is looking adorable. But that is my big house. This build is huge. Okay, we need lots of those then. The good news is though, I'm super, super happy with how these two builds combine. I think it's just, it works perfectly. So that is the first little frontage done. I'm gonna add all of the details and things I think in bulk once we have more of the structures in place. So the next little big house, I mean, I'm calling them little houses. These are my biggest houses. The next little big house that's going in is a red one out the front here. And I'm following pretty much the same design as this one, just so I can get two uniform ones. Then I'll build a bunch of small ones in between. That looks great. That looks seriously good. Now, because this build is going to be standing alone, it is not going to be backed onto by other structures. I'm going to build it in its entirety. And this is actually my first time building one of these in its entirety, so I'm sort of winging it a little bit. Okay. Getting the full build done has made it feel a little bit more substantial now on the landscape. It doesn't look quite as small as the one behind it. My panic has been resolved. So I think I'm going to give this one back here the same treatment. There it is. There it is. Now it's actually looking like a big build. Who would have thought? <laughs> Who would have thought? I would actually say that the proportions of these houses are perfect because we wouldn't want them to be so big that it makes the mountain look small. This really gives a good idea of how big this structure actually is. Imagine if I just constructed one gigantic Miami mansion all over. I mean, that would look pretty cool, actually. Like a Tony Stark house. <laughs> that would be wild. And if I did that, then I could swap out my Superman costume for an Iron Man costume and call myself Tony Starch. This really is a missed opportunity here. Let's keep building these things before I change my mind. My smallest hut has been installed and it is definitely tiny. That is <laughs> it's basically the size of these shulker boxes. Okay. All right. So we need to keep in mind that small builds become very small when installed on this mountain here, but it still looks good. And I'm about to embark on the building of another, this time in this little gap right here, just on the edge of the cliff. And then I think over here, I'm going to do one that's connected to the side of this build. Then there'll be a tall one here. I'm imagining another one of these structures on that ledge there. And then a few small ones in this gap with a big one going up to that ledge. Oh, and I'm going to leave all of this space clear because I do still intend on building up a bridge. So those are my current short-term plans. And to be honest, I'm running out of positive words that I can say. I mean, I've said adorable a bunch. I've said wonderful. I mean, you know, once you start getting to wonderful, when wonderful is your only option, then that means you're really running low. But I do think this is lovely. I've got a beautiful view of Impulse's enormous factory. These two worlds couldn't be much further apart, to be honest with you. Right, let's move on to the build that is going to connect to this back edge right here. This is going to be my first cluster, I guess. And I'm kind of skipping on the progress updates because my brain is having to work so hard to actually get these things to work. But this looks good. Let's have a look from Impulse's viewing platform over here. Okay, well, that almost killed me, so I'm going to view it from up here instead. And it looks slightly strange from that angle, so I'm going to view it from here instead. Okay, you know what? There's nowhere that I can stand that I can actually fully see this build. The only way that I can see it is if I'm flying through the air. And that looks nice. Mission success. And I'm hoping that this next slightly experimental mission should also be successful, although I'm not holding out much hope. I want to build another tiny hut behind these two big structures here, but I want to do it in a way that makes the tiny hut elevated, like it's on its own little platform, which could look totally weird. But I guess there's only one way to find out. And I just want to make it very clear. I'm having a lot of fun right now. 
Like, I'm really, really enjoying this. I'm so far out of my comfort zone that I'm almost finding comfort in the fact that I have zero expectations of doing anything good. It's like if a rally racer moved over to go-karting. Yes, they would be outside of their comfort zone, but there'd be some expectation that they would be okay at it. But if a rally racer moved over to golf, there's like zero pressure because the skills just are not transferable. That's me right now. I'm, I'm a rally racer playing golf. Everyone is expecting me to completely fail at this. So thus, there is no pressure for me to be successful at it. Now let's see what my handiwork has achieved. I love that. I absolutely love that. That this might be my favorite one. This is the, this is lovely. I think I've just become a rally racing golfer. Oh, look at that little thing. Oh, that is cool. Okay, so that proves that my little platform idea also works, which is really going to help us stagger the builds well. <laughs> that looks seriously cool. This is coming together really nicely. Time to pick up some Prismarine for the next build. Turns out I needed a completely different type of Prismarine, which is great. And then I didn't even end up using the Prismarine, which is even greater. And I tell you what, if this build made me feel like a professional golfer, then this build made me want to hit myself over the head with the golf club. This tiny little thing right here, this minute little build has taken me one full hour. Now that's not that long for a Minecraft project. I mean, you know, all of this stuff takes many, many hours. But something like this taking an hour, well, that's just depressing. I built it in three different colors. I experimented with three different colors in the end. I've gone with this and I have to say, I am actually really happy with it. I think it looks great, especially when you see it with all of the other builds on the mountain. Right, I would say we need to fill in this gap right here. Then we can start scaling the wall. And this is going to be another absolutely tiny one because I really like them. I love these little things. They do such a good job of filling little gaps and just making the whole thing feel a lot more busy. And I would say with that tiny little hut to add it in, we have nailed the density that I wanted to achieve on the top of the armchair. On the top of the arm of the armchair here. So let's start moving on up. And I'm going to get the ball rolling with another big one up on this little ledge right here. I think we've got just enough space to make that work. That was a bit of a battle, but I think I've managed to pull it off. I am gradually getting faster at constructing these big ones now, which is great. I'm starting to understand how they come together. And that, that is looking good. That is looking good. I know I say that pretty much every single time I fly away from this thing, but I can't help the fact that it looks good. I mean, what else am I meant to say? Now, one thing that I hadn't quite appreciated is how cool the glow lichen looks at night because obviously it glows. You know, I'd kind of forgotten that glow lichen glows. And that seems, that seems like something that you should laugh at me for. But remember, the glow squid is called a glow squid and that doesn't glow. So why should glow lichen glow? Minecraft is inconsistent in many, many ways, but glow lichen does actually glow and it looks fantastic. It is fast becoming one of my favorite building blocks in the game just for adding texture to otherwise textureless walls. I am so incredibly curious to see if I can squeeze a little build in between this one and like in this gap right here. There's going to be a hut over there, but I think we can squeeze one in. Let's see, is this going to work? That is definitely going to work. If the bottom of that build drops down, which it will, that is going to work. Yep. Yep, that's good. Might be my new favorite. And I'm thinking we can build a big fella on the ledge next to it, right there. So we have two big ones, obviously in different colors. That one crammed in between. I've been building these houses for around about seven hours now. So I am beginning to lose my marbles a tiny bit. As you can tell, uh, I'm referring to them as big fellas and small fellas now. They're my new friends. I actually have a new plan, which is better than the big fella plan. I say we build a little fella on a platform here. So it's kind of constructed as if it's on top of the roof of this one. And then I build another one of these in different block types behind it, scaling up the wall. That gives a much better impression of high density, I think. And the little fella that I want to build is this one. I just, I think this one looks so cool. That was a very good decision. This fits in perfectly. And now the only thing that I have to do is make sure that the build that I'm doing, which is this one, is not in line with this because otherwise it will look a bit silly. So I'm going to try my best to shift it off a little bit and get it closer towards the waterfall. Oh, and you know what? I could actually make it skinnier. I could make it three blocks in the middle instead of five. Just going up like that, that might do it. Well, I've built it now. So hopefully it does do it. I feel like these jump cuts where I've suddenly built the entire structure makes it seem like it doesn't take me long to build the structure. This is time consuming work. And just so you're aware, my sanity has wholeheartedly left the building. Now let's see, am I still a rally driver and also a good golfer? That is the question. I think I am. I like that. That's like a little, it's like a little apartment building. <laughs> it's really cool. The thing is, I really want to avoid it looking like I've copied and pasted the buildings just over and over again in different locations. So that's why I'm kind of mixing up the themes a tiny bit. 
and so far I would say I've been pretty successful. We have we have a good number of buildings right now, and it doesn't feel like any of them are full cookie cutter replacements. There's just one more little hut that I want to construct, which is the one above this red building right here. Okay, I lied, I'm building two more huts, I just can't help myself. And now it is done. These past two hours, I've been truly losing my marbles, like I've been singing to myself, so I feel like this is a good time to stop. <laughs> and also, I just... Oh, that looks great. So these... Wait, which ones did I add? Oh, these two. These ones here. See, I told you I'm losing my marbles. What you have to think is, this is not my forte, okay? So I'm having to work extra hard to actually get these things constructed. This is like the equivalent of Scar designing a 3x3 piston door, okay? It would take a lot of his brain. But I'm getting there. This was the idea of this base this season. It was to push me out of my comfort zone. And I gotta say, I am I really love that little town. The beginnings of this is lovely. Imagining all of these buildings going up, right the way up to the top of the mountain, and then potentially all the buildings on top, or maybe just another structure up there. I mean, whatever we do, I'm liking it. I'm really, really liking it. And I have to say, I am so proud of myself for today's Hermitcraft episode, because not only have we made a bunch of progress, you know, we, we did all of the back of the base, we designed these things, we gathered the resources for them, and we got them started. That's big. But, you know, I'm not one to pat myself on the back. I actually think that I am executing the vision that I have really well. Like, I am, I'm very proud of what I've managed to create in today's Hermitcraft episode. This is right in line with my inspiration, which is the Philippines, Mantai Open Falls, these rural villages and, and mountain towns, all of this. I, I actually think that I'm executing it quite well, which feels really good. So anyway, I, I hope that you enjoyed this Hermitcraft episode. It's been a ton of fun to record, and I hope to catch you in the next one. See ya. And this is super embarrassing, but I actually found myself... <laughs> oh, it's embarrassing that I started to choke up at the end there. I don't know why I've never started to, to get emotional about a Minecraft build before, but here we are. What a strange time it is. Um... Definitely losing my marbles, though. Wow. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go before I say something crazy. Bananas.